first day of class. Maybe you've even copied the word psychology. You've got yourself a brand new notebook. Who here still likes shopping for school supplies? Yeah, I thought so. You're like, ooh, that's pretty good. A lot of the guys are like, no, I'm tough. I'm a thug, yo. All right, so what we're looking at is you got your brand new school supplies. You got your brand new notebook. So probably first day of school, every teacher, every professor in a psychology class or any class puts the title of their class up here, psychology, biology, chemistry, physics. And they start with this question, what is psychology? And nobody says a thing because it's first day of class and everyone's all scared and shy. And then usually they pull this down and you write down a definition like psychology is blah, 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 blah. But before we get there, does anyone have a concept, have an idea of what psychology is? Go ahead, please. Um, scientific study of the mind and mental process. Well done. Very nicely done. Scientific study of the mind and mental processes. Go ahead. Um, I think it's like the study of how people's minds work. Check. I like that idea. Study of how people's minds work. Very well done. Who else? Go ahead. What's your name? Uh, okay. Go ahead. Study of like, the brain and how it functions. Ooh. Study of the brain and how it functions. You are right. You are right. Go ahead. Um, the reason why people act a certain way or do something. I like it. So we got mind, brain, action. She said the reason why people act or do something. Go ahead, please. Um, I was going to say like the human nature of like the things you sort of think and then why you think about them. Human nature and why. Okay, so we got, here we go. Mind, brain, action, human nature. Who's right? You're telling me that all of them are right. That's going to be tough because if we have to learn what we're studying, we have to have a definition. And we can't be like, oh yeah, and that too. And that too. Oh, and that one's good too. Our definition is going to be like 43 sentences long. What is it? I'm going to confess. I don't know what it is. I've been teaching this stuff for a while. I've even read some books on it. Some of them, seriously, I finished. <laughs> really? So check it out. If I've been doing this for a while, Here's my definition of psychology. Ready? Get ready to write this down. Here's my definition. I don't have one. I've been studying this for a long time. There's actually one kid in the back right now who's writing down insert definition here. Don't do that. So I was looking around. Who is it? All right. So what we're looking at is when we say what is psychology, we really still don't know what it is. I know there's words, and I know you had a very good definition, and you had a very good definition. One of the problems we have is those words aren't themselves very well defined. You said study of the mind. What's the mind? Hmm. That's a honeydew of a melon scratcher. You know, that one's a pretty tough one. <laughs> what does that even mean? So when we say this, insert definition here. Seriously, you just signed up for class. Your first day of this class, and I'm telling you, I don't know what it is. I'm going to teach you a class on something we don't really know what it is. Oh, we can have a pretty good definition. Generally agreed upon to be the study of mind and behavior. Well done. However, there are things that are left out. What is behavior? Things you do? Reflex? What is the mind? And I think you can realize studying the mind, that's pretty tough to do. And we're going to dig into it a little bit because we really got to talk about the mind. So let's pick the word apart. Whenever you see a word that you don't know what it is or you've kind of got an idea, we're going to divide it in half. Psychology. It's got its roots in ancient Greek. Psych or psyche means mind or soul. Ology, study. You can see the root word logic in there. So psychology is roughly translated study of the mind. Everyone here has changed their mind. What changed? Say it again? The way, the way that you feel about it. That's a great question. We can't define feelings. We can't define you. Okay, maybe I'm, not, maybe I'm coming at it the wrong way. Everyone knows what the brain is. Brain, three pound blob of fat. It is. And later on, we're going to dissect the brain in this class. Oh. Uh, it's a sheep brain. All right, don't, don't get people like, really? All right, then I need some volunteers, you know, <laughs> sacrifice. <laughs> it's not right. So, we're gonna, so we know what the brain is. Some of you still don't believe me. All right, go home, get a Q-tip, put it in your ear, push, there's your brain. <laughs> so you can hold the brain. 
You can weigh the brain. It doesn't matter. We know where it is. We know what it is. Where's the mind? Is it your mind in your brain? I've dissected brains before. I've looked. I've cut all through them, made microscopic slides. I've never seen a mind in there. I've seen blood vessels. I've seen structures of the brain. I've seen fluid. Never, ever, ever seen a mind. If, if you think your mind's in your brain, well, may, maybe it is. Well, let me ask you this way. Do you have a mind or are you a mind? Oh my God. I know people are like, <laughs> make it stop. I don't, I don't want to be here anymore. Someone in the back is texting, Mom, help. get me out of here. These are some pretty powerful questions. When we say, where are you, how do you know that your body isn't basically an analogy of a remote control car? And somewhere in a different dimension, your soul, your spirit, you, you, are basically just using a little joystick controller and walking your body around. Prove to me that's not right. Let me throw it this way. I'm, I'm a horrible drawer. But you know what? That doesn't stop me. Don't keep me down. You saw my scribbles there. What if we were to do this? Here's you, and you're happy. Why? Can you draw better than that? All right, you're happy until, guess what? A gigantic truck, all right, just about runs you over. I know, right? That's a horrible day. So here you are. You're on the ground. Here's the truck. Uh, I know. It ran over everything that is you, and there's like you juice all on the pavement. Now, amazingly, imagine this is 10 years, 20 years, 30 years in the future. And they can preserve brains. They can do a brain transplant. No way. That's science fiction. Eh. What's today's science was yesterday's science fiction. We have cars that drive by themselves. We have the interaction between computers and brains today. And they've done it a lot of different ways. And when we get to the brain unit, we'll talk about it. One very cool way is a way to help people who are paralyzed. Their brain works fine. The arm part of their brain works fine. But the signal from the brain can't get to the muscles of their arm. But they can still think of moving their arm. So if you can get a computer to read the signals of the brain when a person moves their arm, well, then you can make a, com a robot arm move. And that was five years ago. You can insert a probe into a brain to kind of put signals into a brain, electrical signals in a brain, and that helps with certain mental, mental illnesses. It helps, it hurts, uh, helps with certain conditions. So bear with me if I get a little science fiction-y on this. Paramedics arrive on the scene. They cut open your scalp, they take your brain. And what do they do? It just so happens there was an evil professor, Doofenshmirtz, and what he wanted is he said to these paramedics, if you ever come across someone who's trapped under a steamroller, I want you to grab their brain and give it to me. I'll pay you 10 bucks. The paramedics are like, sweet. They get the 10 bucks. The evil mad scientist gets the brain. So here's the brain, and it's like kept alive. There's your spinal cord. There's your cerebellum. And now what this mad scientist did was build a Frankenstein body. Here's the head. Video camera, video camera. Microphone for ears, microphone for ears. Speaker for a mouth. Now, it also built a body. Now, check this out. In the back of your brain, you have the part that interprets visual signals. Here's the back. You don't have any eyes. Why? Because they were run over by a steamroller. No eyes. But what you can do is you take the wires from the video cameras, hook them into the back of your brain that deals with visual information. You take the stuff from the microphone and you put it in the part that deals with hearing. There's a part of you that deals with speech. You're going to hook it to the speaker. Now, you and I both know there's things like touch screens. There's things like keyboards that not only can tell if you press, but where you press, how hard you press. Was it cold? Was it sharp? Was it pointy? And you can use that technology all over the robot skin. And you wire the robot skin to something called the somatosensory cortex. So they turn on the robot. And what the robot sees goes to your brain. What the robot here goes to your brain. You say something, it goes out the robot's mouth. You start walking around. My question is this. Where are you? Are you in the brain? Where is your mind? 
Are you in the brain? Are you in the robot? Are you in the middle? Anyone? I'm, I'm worried because all I see is like big eyes and people are all scared. Please go ahead. When you had your thought, who made it? Did the thought just appear in your brain? Or do you construct it word by word? I don't pretend to have any of these answers. If any of you do, please write them down. I'll publish your work and get the Nobel Prize <laughs> and kind of take credit for it. But if you have any of these answers, by all means, let me know. So if your parents kind of bother you with questions, first day of school, you come home, your mom's like, honey, how was it? How were your classes? And you're like, mom, just shh, quiet. But your mom still wants to talk. We never talk anymore. And your mom's all mad at you. We never then ask your mom, mom, where's your mind? <laughs> She's like, what? And then walk away. You know, <laughs> that's kind of what we're looking at. I think you can see this whole random conversation we had. Notice, look, in my class notes, I think we've gone down like an inch. I've got 17 pages of class notes. I think we're like three lines down. We got a work cut out for us. I think so far you've written down one or two lines. We really haven't learned anything. I want you to go home tonight. One night only, extra credit project, 4 and A. I want you to make a model of your mind. Where would you start? Be like, Mom, we need some popsicle sticks and fast. Would you make a jello creation? Would you weave a basket? Toothpicks and Play Doh? An interpretive dance. How big would you make it? What color would it be? All right, so let's do it this way then. I don't know what the mind is. And I don't think you know what the mind is. So let's dip into some Renaissance artists, Renaissance philosophers. Michelangelo, not the Ninja Turtle, but the other Michelangelo. He sculpted the statue of David. But if you look at the statue of David, it is amazing. Think about it. A couple hundred years ago, he took this, I don't know, gigantic thing of marble, and he cut with hand tools, and he made it so precise, you could see the striations on the muscle. It's like a perfect replica of male anatomy. And people are like, how? How did you do this? He said, it's easy. I just chipped away all the stuff that wasn't the statue. Rumor was, Michelangelo said the statue was already there. I just freed it from the rock. So now we're going to take a page out of his book. I don't know what the mind is. So let's find out what the mind is not. So here's my dare. For an A, whole semester, you get me this one, you're done. You don't even have to show up anymore. Sit home, collect your A. Give me something that is not connected to the human mind, that is not related to the mind. Anything. In your head. What's one thing that's not connected to the mind? Me or him? Yes, both of you. <laughs> How do you know? Because it's not connected to my brain. What's that? It's not connected to my brain. How do you know it's there? I don't know. You sure? We're going to come back to that. Go ahead. Anything that you don't know of. Anything you don't know of. Can you think of something you don't know? Well, nothing. I mean, like, nothing is not a part of your brain. Nothing is not a part of your brain. Yeah. Look around this class. I guarantee you seven people out of 28 right now are thinking of nothing. Look. <laughs> <laughs> in the mouth half of it. Just sitting there. I had a couple kids, and one kid's, oh, yeah, what about the weather? I said, what do you think about the weather? He said, it's a hot day outside. He got proud of himself. I said, is that your opinion? He goes, yeah. So where's your opinion come from? He goes, so when you say, people are like, the desk, don't get proud, he's like, my pen! And he's like, was real, real happy that he found something that wasn't connected to the mind. I said, how do you know your pen's there? And he said, because I can feel it, I can see it. Go ahead. Um, is it to specifically your mind or just the mind in general? Anything. Because like if somebody else made a, like, made a reaction or something happened to you, like a stimuli to you, like they hit you, that, that's not your mind because you didn't do that, but... So you're saying someone else's mind. Somebody, el like somebody else's... 
happening. I don't know. Like, All right, I see where you're going. Let's see what's going to happen. I was going to save this later for the year. I will get to the pain right. issue. All right. Oh my God. Stop, stop. Why did you care? Are we not connected to each other? <laughs> I'm still really freaked out about that. Just take a I think you know where this is going. If you can feel and see something, it's connected to your mind. Anything you can think of is connected to your mind. So uh, we don't know what the mind is. And we don't know what the mind isn't. This is some tough stuff. Your brain, you just want to quit now? So what are we going to study? I mean, yeah, we got a textbook, we got terms, we got concepts, we got an important person, maybe even some dates. But you can see we've got it. We've, this is a pretty tough subject to go. I think you guys know that in your brain there are a bajillion, nearly an uncounted many of neurons. I think the estimate is about 900 billion neurons. So you have these neurons, and I think you know that when neurons talk to each other chemically and electrically, a thought happens, emotions happen. And when sometimes when that goes wrong, maybe that's what we call illness or abnormal psychology. You got, give me a nod if you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we go. You nodded. Theoretically, if you nodded, the part of your brain, neurons connected to each other, and that made you nod. Okay, it makes sense. Now, I want you to do this. I want you to think, not just think, but I want you to imagine, really imagine an ice cream, your favorite ice cream cone. Imagine your favorite ice cream cone. Go ahead and take three seconds, really well, sum it up. Does it have to be a cone? Yes. Can it be a cup? No. no. I don't know how old you all are. And, but I'm a little disturbed you would even think of a cup. Real ice cream is not in a cup. You get more in a cup. Unless you're seven years old and your mom doesn't want you spilled in the back of the station wagon. No more cups. It's time to graduate from cups. Yeah, but like, did they put a brownie in They put what? Oh, brownie in the cup. Oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I already don't like this class. <laughs> so check it out. You've got your ice cream cone in your mind. Now, some of you might have imagined the color pink strawberry or green chocolate chip. And some of you imagine it's the, uh, the sugar cone or that cake cone, which I kind of like, but you got to be careful when you get to the bottom of, because it's got the reinforced structural cross beams at the bottom. Who knows what I'm talking about? You bite in the bottom of a cake cone, it hurts your gums, it's no good. When you thought of your ice cream, who thought of it? What thought of it? Notice that neurons fired to make you see it. Maybe you actually saw the color. Maybe you actually remembered the taste of it. You remember the last time you were there, and all of those take neurons to talk to each other. But my question is, what started those neurons in action? Your brain, okay, so your brain started your brain in action. Your will. Your will, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Um, what you said, the activity. The activity, okay, so the activity of some neurons started the activity of other neurons. What started the activity of the first set of neurons? You're, okay, so, but I thought we just discussed that the neurons of your brain cause the thoughts of your mind. And so you're suggesting that it's the thoughts that cause the neurons. You mean you don't have the answer? No one has the answer to this. This is the, this is the part of first day class where you kind of like brown nose and put out a good impression. Who's really, really shy in the class? Are you shy? I don't believe you. All right, my question, is, <laughs> my question is simply this. Why should this stuff be studied? Why shouldn't it? It's really a question. I have one kid in my other class who's like, so we can use it on people. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> um, you know, if you think, should you use psychology to make education less boring? That works. Should you use psychology to improve people's mental health? I think so. Now, I don't know if anyone here has mental illness, and we'll probably talk about that because guess what? It's much more common than people think, but nobody talks about it because everyone's embarrassed about it. But even if you don't have a mental illness, could you be mentally healthier? Yeah. Everyone here, I think so. Everyone could be physically healthier. Thanks. Wow. <laughs> 
every, I'm excluding my, everyone in the universe. I wasn't throwing you all under the bus. <laughs> you don't know how to do that. Was that a cat joke? <laughs> <laughs> Who should study it? I don't know. I mean, you tell me. Should your mom study psychology to deal with the freaking neurotic teen? I mean, I'm not throwing, now I'm throwing you guys under the bus. <laughs> Let's face it. Have you all ever seen a choice? You knew what the right one was, and you knew what the wrong one was. You chose the wrong one, knowing it was wrong, knowing you were going to get caught, and you did it anyway. Who's with me on that? Nice. Do you think your parents should study psychology? Clearly. Or should you study psychology so you can deal with your mom? I mean, do you have moms that are like overly protective? Does anyone have a mom that's like, honey, it's not you I'm worried about. It's the other people. We see that all the time. That doesn't make sense, Mom. Because, never mind. Okay, so the question is, who should study it? Look, we've, we've talked a lot about the brain, and it's interesting that in all of my classes, and you guys, you're pretty astute, you're, you're pretty sharp, you're aware of what's going on. When I say psychology, we're talking about the brain. Psychology is, some people say it's a new science, some people say an old science, it depends on how you count. Psychology is really only about 140 years old. Now, some science like chemistry, physics, they're really old. So psychology is relatively young, and it's gone through its changes. It used to be, if you ever have butterflies in your stomach, and you get anxiety, you get nervousness, maybe it's before, before the first day of school, maybe you got to give a presentation in class, tryouts, audition, go into work for an interview, you get nervous, you get butterflies in your stomach. Nowadays, it's all about the brain. It's all about biology. We think nerves are created by chemicals, whether they're hormones or whether it's synaptic firing in the brain, neurons talking to each other. Years ago, you know why people got nervous? Because you had unconscious, uncomfortable echoes from something that scared you in childhood. You don't remember it, but your parents didn't treat you right one day. And they planted a little seed of nervousness and fear, and that kind of came back. Do you believe that? How many of y'all think that people learn fear? When you were a little kid, two or three years old, you'd walk around the house all naked. When you were a little kid, four or five years old, you'd put on a play or a performance or you sing and dance, and you didn't care who saw you. Nowadays, okay, I know anyone right now, for a sticker. <laughs> for a sticker. Just a sticker. You don't know my stickers. <laughs> All right, Dan. Because sometimes my stickers are puffy stickers. Oh. Yeah. If we perform. What's that? If you said if we perform. Dancing <laughs> singer? Not going to perform. You're not doing it now. When did you learn this thing called nervousness or embarrassment? So. When I was a tree in the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> so is fear, is, is who you are. Is it a set of chemistry? Is it learned? Is it something deep in your unconscious that happened to you in childhood? What we're suggesting is right now, all of this psychology stuff we're talking about is kind of where we are now is we're going to hit a lot of brain, 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 brain. You don't believe me? Let's do it this way. Does our brain make us do things? Does your brain make you do things? All right, let's do this. Everyone put your right hand on the desk. When I say go, first person to raise it in the air wins. Go! Nice. All right, put your hands down. My question to you is, did your brain make your hand move? It did. I would agree, totally. You have a, you have a part of your brain that controls the muscles of your arm, and it's going to shoot up there like that. No doubt. Did your brain make you laugh? Who is the most ridiculous person that cannot keep a straight face? Everyone, no smiling contest. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Can you not smile? No. Not at all. She walked in the class like, <laughs> I was like, what? what are you smiling for? Does your brain make you smile? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> it, it, it does. OK, so now here's what I want you to do. When your parents get mad at you and they give you the lecture, the same lecture you've always had, and they say things like, think. God, just be responsible. And you get the responsible. How many of you all have ever had the potential speech where you can do anything you want as long as it, you get that a lot, I've seen a lot of nods. Next time your parents, and they get frustrated with you, and they're just looking at you like, why? Why did you do that? It was just so dumb. Here's your answer. My brain made me do it. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah. Are they going to buy it? 
No. <laughs> Will any one of them like, oh, don't care me that young lady. Lady <laughs> that. And then now I want you to say, oh yeah, well then that's your brain making you mad. Try not to be mad, mom. Don't hit me that, you're gonna make me mad. <laughs> See? <laughs> what we're looking at here is are we a brain or do we have a brain? Are we a mind or do we have a mind? Going back to the robotic example, we had a brain, a little brain controlling a robot. Could the brain control two? Would there be two of you? Is there a limit? Would you want there to be two of you? Are you okay? You look like you're, you're, you're shaking. <laughs> what? Are no, you okay? Like, what has a mind? No, it's have a brain to have a mind. I don't know. Like, what if a desk has a mind and it's like all pissed off with us? Because all of our desks have a mind. If I were a desk, I'd be pretty mad because I get sat on. That people put gum under me. Like That's so yeah. Again, we haven't even started talking about dreams. And are they? Oh, dang, I'm gonna go be scared. So Sam told me because he was like, "Here you And yeah, I mean, wait till I hypnotize. What? What? How do you know what happened? <laughs> no sneezing. Um, Class okay. rule. Okay. And no giggling. <laughs> now you're doing both. Are you trying to have an attitude problem with me? You'll figure it out. And if you don't, I'll be okay. And that's kind of the important thing that we keep in mind here. You know what? I've already decided I'm not going to like your class. <laughs>